welcome to Mill Talk. The primary goal of the Mill Talk program is to inform you, the public, of what the military commands are doing in the local area and how they interact with the civilian community in various civic functions. Mill Talk is also designed to provide information about the many diverse programs and activities which are of interest to the military retirees, veterans, active duty personnel, and their families. Sponsored by the NCOA and produced by Combined Talents, here's your host, retired Command Master Chief, Butch Wallace. Good evening and welcome to Mill Talk. I'm Butch Wallace and I'll be your host for this evening. Mill Talk is sponsored by the NCOA and produced by Combined Talents. Tonight's show is being brought to you by Consumer Credit Counseling Service of West Florida. Heard of Consumer Credit Counseling Service of West Florida? The Consumer Credit Counseling Service of West Florida can put you back on the road to financial recovery. Call today. Welcome back to Mill Talk, where our topic tonight is the United States Coast Guard. And with us tonight, we have some excellent representatives of the Coast Guard that came in from Mobile to talk to us about this subject. First of all, to my left, I have Master Chief Rick Trent, who is the Command Enlisted Advisor for the Coast Guard Aviation Training Facility in Mobile. Hi, Butch. Glad to have you with us, Master Chief. Thank you. And next to Master Chief Trent, we have Petty Officer First Class Dave Boyette, which is a, who is a United States Coast Guard recruiter. Glad you came on board. Thanks. Always, we have somebody in uniform here and we don't have a recruiter, we always get the questions that we can't answer, so we'll always have you on board to recruit anybody we can. Maybe we can answer them. <laughs> I guess to start us off, uh, Master Chief, why don't you, how big is the Coast Guard? Uh, we're carrying a strength of about 38,000 right now on active duty. Okay. And like Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, they're all subordinates to the Secretary of Defense. You have a different subordination for the Coast Guard, don't you? Correct. We're under a transportation department, uh, except in time of war. Then we are transferred under the Navy Department. Okay. Well, let's move into your type of role down there in, in Mobile. What is the mission of the aviation training facility there? Well, it's a very complex mission. I'll try to cover it in parts. Uh, the facility was actually uh, initiated about 21 years ago to uh, fill a gap that the Coast Guard was having in pilot training. We were kind of helter-skelter up to that point uh, with uh, no good standardization. So Mobile, the facility in Mobile, the training center, was actually created to uh, train Coast Guard pilots. We uh, take care of all the training over there now for all Coast Guard pilots on everything except the C-130 that the Coast Guard flies. Uh, right now, that's the Falcon jet and three different type helicopters. Uh, along with that training program, uh, let me back up just for a minute. Actually, the pilots are trained, their basic skills, uh, most of them here in Pensacola at the Naval facility. Then they come to us and learn the specific type airplane. Also, after they're out in the field, if uh, they need to upgrade or switch airplanes, they come to Mobile. They also come to Mobile once a year for standardization. Usually that only takes about a week. In addition to that, we also have uh, pilot and enlisted crews that go out. They're on the road probably over 50% of the time. They go to all the uh, air stations the Coast Guard has and uh, work the crews there to make sure that the entire Coast Guard is flying standard on these different type aircraft and procedures are standard, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, along with that training mission, we also have uh, a rescue swimmer standardization program over there now. Coast Guard enlisted folks that are rescue swimmers go through right here in Pensacola. Uh, however, after they're out in the field, we feel it's real necessary to keep them totally standard. So we have uh, two E6s and a Master Chief over there now that spend about 65% of their time on the road doing the same thing. They go to all the air stations and work the crews there. Uh, day and night drops out of helicopters into the ocean, et cetera, like that to uh, make sure they are standard. I think that pretty well covers the uh, training role over there. You know, you always think it's odd because I saw you with the air crew wings, you know. You always think of the Coast Guard with the Coast Guard cutters and everything, you know. Think too much about having the airfield, but that's, that's great, it really is. Right, aviation's fairly strong. I think we've got 29 air stations right now, give or take one, and uh, uh, it takes both sides to affect all of our missions. Uh, a lot of people don't realize it, but uh, in addition to the training mission, one of the other biggest missions over there is uh, support of the polar ops. All of the icebreakers that the Coast Guard has on deployment, the pilot, air crew, aircra and aircraft, that's two helicopters for each deployment, all come out of Mobile. 
Uh, in about a month, we have the last H-52 deployment going, uh, which is the old 20-something-year-old helicopter we've been uh, flying. Anybody that hasn't seen one, we've just donated one down here to the Air Museum. They can see one there. But the last deployment with H-52s will be going, and then this summer we'll have the first one with the Dolphin helicopter uh, going out. That's about uh, four officers and ten enlisted and two aircraft that go on each one of those icebreakers when they deploy. Okay. And your second big mission, I know that you're talking about over there, is your search and rescue mission. Right. Uh, we also have a search and rescue responsibility for most of the Gulf, about from Apalachicola westward and all the way down to the Yucatan. And that's a 24-hour-a-day coverage with uh, Falcon jets. Uh, of course, also, our helicopters can respond to hurricanes and other emergencies, but we don't, we don't run a... Uh, search and rescue commitment on a 24-hour call on those. I think I brought a film clip. Uh, you got a film clip on. Now let's watch that film clip and actually see what they do in the search and rescue. You should have been here last night. The weather was changing minute by minute when the call came in. A flare had been spotted on the point. Copy, flare sighted. Five five two sighting confirmed at. Sector one search is complete. Negative sightings over. This is Hilo six five five two. We've got people in the water. They look okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. People in the water on the southern side. Now you're safe. Looks like those could make it all worthwhile. That's an excellent tape on the search and rescue mission of the Coast Guard. And before we further discuss the other missions of the Coast Guard, we're going to take a quick break right now, uh, and we'll be back with you to further discuss the Coast Guard. For the past 29 years, the Non-Commissioned Officers Association, NCOA, has been serving the military community with the strongest organization of its kind in Washington, D.C. From its National Capital Office in Alexandria, Virginia, the NCOA provides legislative representation, regulatory guidance with government agencies, liaison activities with the five branches of the military services, and educational programs with both the military and civilian community. The NCOA is proof of commitment and your voice in Washington. Strength in numbers is a cliche to some people, but I can tell you from my chair in the Pentagon, I know full well about strength in numbers on Capitol Hill. And if we had every enlisted person as a member of NCOA, that would be an awesome figure. And it would show to anyone that we are concerned about our benefits and our entitlement. We welcome you to join our organization and take advantage of our proud past and promising future. Join the NCOA. There is no better travel value than a cruise to Alaska, the Caribbean, Mexico, Europe, or even the Orient. Pick the itinerary of your choice from a Bahamas weekend to a 50-day cruise around South America. See how easy and affordable it is to visit the destinations you've always dreamed of exploring. Call the cruise specialist at CruiseAway 944-1700 to enjoy renowned service, fine dining, live entertainment, accommodations, and shipboard activities at one surprisingly low package price. That's CruiseAway 944-1700. Our finances are a mess. We owe everybody, and we're spending more than we're earning. I just wish someone had counseled us. Is bankruptcy the only way out of this mess? If you are having financial difficulties and you're thinking of bankruptcy as a way out, the Consumer Credit Counseling Service of West Florida may be able to help you by providing free and confidential counseling and assistance that can put you back on the road to financial recovery. Take charge of your finances and call the Consumer Credit Counseling Service of West Florida. Welcome back to Mill Talk, where we're discussing the United States Coast Guard. And we had uh, talked about two missions there, and you actually have one other major mission out there at Mobile, don't you? That's correct. Uh, we're very big in law enforcement now. I think everybody in the country knows that, uh, the way things have gone, and uh, with Bush behind everything that's going on in the Caribbean. We've got a pretty big commitment at the Aviation Training Center in Mobile, too. We have uh, three of our Falcon jets now are involved in uh, law enforcement. I'm talking drugs. 
Basically, those three airplanes have been equipped with some heat sensing equipment and some F-16 radars, very expensive, so that they can track day or night, all weather, track these incoming uh, unidentified aircraft that are suspected of drug smuggling. And our coverage on that is basically the Gulf. And in addition to that, we have deployments continually down in the Caribbean. I really can't say too much about that. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's a pretty big mission over there. We we'll also have a film clip on that also. I'd like to see if we could get that clip on the law enforcement for the United States Coast Guard. The leader of the beach, Sundancer, here with you. Coast Guard, get out of here. Coast Guard to base, he is running. Coast Guard be that in pursuit of suspect. This is not a sneak preview of my next movie. This is what our Coast Guard does every day. They're the U.S. law enforcement on the high seas. The Coast Guard stops drug smugglers, prevents illegal immigration, and protects our ports and harbors. Now, what do you do every day? Be part of the action. Welcome back to Mill Talk. We're discussing the United States Coast Guard. We're going to move right into the recruiting role right now. And how is recruiting in the Coast Guard? Right now, we're pretty much up to snuff. We're still trying to get um, good qualified recruits. We're needing some minority recruiting right now. Um, but uh, normally overall, you're meeting your goals normally, though. Meeting our goals and everything, but uh, our minority recruiting, we're you're not having a hard time just turning people away, then, huh? Uh, <laughs> no, we're not. We're there. We're not turning anybody away. We're we're making our our goals. We're still got our doors open, though. Okay, we got a phone line here. Let's take that. Good evening, and I can't see any lights coming on. Well, I never have had too much luck with my electronic major. <laughs> if somebody wanted to uh, to join the Coast Guard, what would they? Uh, how could they do that? Uh, basically, to start off, there's there's a couple of tests they have to take and qualify. Certain scores for high school grad, prior service, um, people with the GED, we do take. And uh, once they take the ASVAB score, it's called the ASVAB. Once they take it, that's the start to pass that, and uh, go from there. You have a 1-800 number they can also call if they're interested in, in, in enlisted, don't you? Yes, which uh, they can call us Monday through Friday from 8 till 4 o'clock. And there's also an answering machine that's uh, on 24 hours a day afterwards on weekends. It's 1-800-288-5187. Okay, we got that on the screen there. Good. Yeah. Uh, like I say, that's, there's five of us there in Mobile from uh, 8 to 4, Monday through Friday normally. And uh, then there is an answering machine. Then. If they'll call and leave their name and a telephone number, we'll be more and a convenient time for us to reach them. We'll be glad to call them back. I always like to ask this question: Why should somebody join the the Coast Guard rather than the Army, Navy, Air Force, or Marines? Uh, a lot of people ask us that question. The main thing is, we like it. Uh, we're smaller. We're a little closer knit. We're more like we're a little laid back. We like to say uh, a little friendlier, I guess. Uh, we're not Department of Defense. We are Department of Transportation. So it's not. I don't know, it's just, we just like what we do a little bit better, the people. Okay. Get, uh, Let's take a phone It's hard here. to answer that with the other services listening. I got red lights going this time. I think I might be able to work it. Good evening. Welcome to Mill Talk. Wallace, you are a clutch. Do you know that? You can't even answer a phone right. But you did do something right. In all your shows, you finally got some real sailors on. <laughs> some real Marlin Spike sailors. I didn't know how to tie knots. <laughs> and God bless them, they've done a hell of a job in World War II, Korea, and all the others. Now, if you want to join the service again, that's the one. Hooligans Navy. <laughs> Fellas, you're the best there is. Butch, Thanks. learn how to answer a phone. Thank Thanks you, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got a little recruiting uh, emphasis there. That's the reason to join the Coast Guard right there. <laughs> I, I see, I didn't need to answer that. How many career fields do you have in, in the Coast Guard? Right uh, well, strictly career fields, <coughs> uh, what we call ratings. There's approximately 16 definite ratings, but they're all diverse, diversified. The Master Chief and his ratings probably, as he went to his A school since then, he's, well, there's a nu numerous 
C schools and advanced training schools that they can go to. And so just because you're in the Coast Guard with a certain rating, that doesn't mean that you're going to just go to A school and never go any further. There's the C schools, civilian type schools and everything that they can go to. So to further and advance the training and the knowledge that they have for the rating that the person does select. And that's another thing the Coast Guard, a person coming into the Coast Guard, if he's qualified, selects his rating. And that's what he'll, you know, if he selects his job, that's what he does. He's not, he wouldn't be an AE and work as a cook. Okay. What's the least amount of time they can join the Coast Guard? Right now we have a two-year program, but uh, we don't, it's not very popular with the recruits because a person coming in for two years with, uh, we are meeting our goals and we are as, as limited as we are to the schools and the number of classes that we can put on for the A school training. Uh, a person coming in for two years, there's no guarantee that he would get an A school in that, that length of time. And if he did get an A school in that length of time, he would probably have to extend a certain amount of time to meet the requirements of the service in order to get the A school and serve the time that's required. Okay. Well, we're going to take a break right now. We'll be back with you to further discuss the United States Coast Guard. retirement community, a dignified way of life. In today's business world, computers are essential. Knowing who to call for computer solutions and needs can be a problem. TMS Computers, a today's computer business center, has one of the largest repair centers on the Gulf Coast. We handle all major brands of computers, both micros and minis, and related peripherals. TMS Computers is a today's computer business center which specializes in computer solutions and offers carry-in and on-site repairs. Stop by or give us a call today. Our finances are a mess. We owe everybody and we're spending more than we're earning. I just wish someone had counseled us. Is bankruptcy the only way out of this mess? If you are having financial difficulties and you're thinking of bankruptcy as a way out, the Consumer Credit Counseling Service of West Florida may be able to help you by providing free and confidential counseling and assistance that can put you back on the road to financial recovery. Take charge of your finances and call the Consumer Credit Counseling Service of West Florida. No talk. We're talking about the United States Coast Guard. Master Chief, uh, you're talking about those missions down there. How many people do you have assigned to take care of all those missions? At the Aviation Training Center right now, we're carrying about 600 people, including our uh, 90 or so civilian employees. That's an awful lot of people. For Coast Guard, doesn't sound like much to some folks, but for a Coast Guard air station, that's probably about the third largest. Well, I've seen Admiral Yost on uh, TV a few times lately. Uh, are you involved in that uh, cleanup in Alaska? Well, the Aviation Training Center itself is not directly involved. However, we have a tenant command on there called the Atlantic Strike Team. It's a group of Coast Guard folks, uh, one of one of uh, the groups is in Mobile and one is in Sacramento and their only mission is to react to chemical and oil spills and yes uh, they're very involved we've got 20 some odd of their people up in uh, Alaska now and we'll be up there all summer long they're rotating in and out. Oh, doggone. Well you know I, we've got an Army, Air Force, and Navy Academy. There's something unique about the Coast Guard Academy isn't there? That's correct. Uh, the Coast Guard Academy does you don't have to have a congressional appointment to go there. It's on your own merit uh, if it so happened to work out that uh, everybody, uh, the best was from Florida, they could fill a whole class from Florida. It's not like four from Alabama and six from Florida and by a congressional appointment. It's strictly by their own academic merit and the letters of recommendation. Okay. And your advancement system, how is that in the Coast Guard? Well, the enlisted advancement system is kind of unique in the Coast Guard and it's a combination of the time you've put in, the time you've been in your specialty, the awards you've received, your uh, evaluations, and then a testing process. And it's uh, fairly wide open in most rates. It's easy to advance in the Coast Guard if you want to. Okay. How about the benefits, uh, Petty Officer uh, Boyette? Uh, the benefits the same as being in the other armed forces? Even though we're DOT, the benefits, the GIB, and everything is the same in the Coast Guard that you would have in the Army, the Navy, or the, other, or the Air Force. Commissary exchange, GI Bill, all those things. Everything. We have, this, with an ID card, you can go into any of the Navy exchanges, Air Force, and so forth. Plus, we have some of our own. How about the females? Are they allowed in the Coast Guard? Yes, they are. 
we take we take females anytime. Every I think day. you also have something unique about sea duty for females, don't you? Uh, yes, we do have some of the ships that do have females assigned to them, and they can go to sea if they like. Plus, they can not only go to sea; they can also command a sea unit. I think that's really something to be commanding, you know, because you can't be have that in the Navy right now. That's uh, because of the limitations of Congress. Well, what other major commands do you have down there, Mobile, besides your command that you're in, uh, assigned to? Well, besides the 600 out at the Aviation Training Center, we have uh, Coast Guard Group Mobile, uh, which I'm not affiliated with. However, they are located uh, down on the waterfront in Mobile, and basically all these small boat stations and aids to navigation stations that run from approximately Destin all the way over to Gulfport come under their command. They also have several vessels tied up there, including two of the brand new uh, 110 foot uh, drug boats uh, specifically made for uh, speed so they can be handling uh, some of the surface drug stuff. Okay. Well, before we close out tonight, uh, you want to say something about an open house that you got scheduled out there, don't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. We're having a big open house to celebrate Armed Forces Day over at the Aviation Training Center. It's one week from today on the 20th. If you uh, go over to Mobile uh, on I-65 and turn off on Airport Boulevard towards the airport, you can't miss the signs. There's going to be simulator rides, concessions, uh, air demos by all of the aircraft there, plus static displays of all kinds of Coast Guard aircraft. Uh, the public can go inside of them, boats, uh, some of the stuff from that strike team I mentioned. Uh, it should be a real good day. It starts at 10 o'clock and will run until about 4 o'clock. Okay. We have a tape on that, too, if we could watch that tape on the open house that they've got scheduled down there. Saturday, May 20th, is Armed Forces Day, and the Coast Guard invites you and your family to a super open house. Help us celebrate 200 years of Coast Guard service to the country. Watch a great air show. See Coast Guard crews perform dramatic rescue demonstrations. You may even take a flight simulator ride. It's a free, exciting family Saturday. May 20th, 10 to 3, at the Coast Guard Aviation Training Center on Tanner Williams Road. Welcome back to Mill Talk. We're going to close out the United States Coast Guard show. I'd like to thank our special guest tonight, Master Chief uh, Trent and uh, Petty Officer Boyette, for coming in from Mobile to talk about the Coast Guard. Uh, let me tell you one thing. I, I found out an awful lot that it's so close down there in Mobile, and I didn't realize how many people that you really do have down there. But with all the, the units that you have in Mobile, that's a quite a uh, sum. And you said it was about the second largest in the, there is? About the second or third largest air station, and uh, uh, if you were counting, we've got 900 to 1,000 active duty Coast Guard uh, in Mobile at the various commands, so it's pretty much a Coast Guard town, and I, I understand the Navy's going to join us soon, so we'll make it a Navy and a Coast Guard town. Well, that's right. With the home porting, you sure will. Well, okay. Well, thank you again for being with us. Thanks for having us. I'd like to thank our viewing audience tonight. Thank our Blab TV crew, which is always doing a good job. Thank our sponsor, the NCOA, our producer, Combined Talents, and a special thanks to the Gosport for the excellent advertisement they gave for the show tonight. Uh, the Gosport reaches over 22,000 families here in the Pensacola area. It reaches all the DOD employees and the military populace. If anybody would like to advertise in the Gosport, they can give Kim Patrick a ring at 438-5421. Next week, uh, we'll be back here at the same time, and our topic will be Handicaps USA. So be with us then. Thank you, and good evening. Thank you for joining us this evening and we hope you will be with us again next week for another important and informative program this has been mill talk today's voice for tomorrow